concerning worry and fear. I am the body of Christ, and Satan's sickness, sin has no power over me and my family. For I overcome evil with good. I am of God, and I have overcome Satan. For greater is the Spirit of God that is in me than the sickness, evil spirit that is in the world. So I fear no evil, for thou art with me, Jesus. Your word and your spirit, they comfort me. I am far from oppression, depression, and fear does not come near me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. For my righteousness is of the Lord Jesus. Whatsoever I do prospers. For I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I am delivered from the evils of this present world. For this is the will of God concerning me. No evil shall befall me, neither shall any plague or sickness come near my dwelling. For my God has given his angels charge over me, and they keep me in all my ways. And in my pathway there is God kind of life, and there is no destruction and death. I am a doer of the word of God. And I am blessed in my deeds. I am happy in these things which I do because I am a doer of the word of God. I take the shield of faith and I quench every fiery dart that the wicked one brings against me. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon my body. Every disease, every germ, every virus that touches my body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ, every tissue of my body functions in the perfection to which God has created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in my body in the name of Jesus. I am an overcomer. I overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb and the word of my testimony. I am submitted to God and the devil flees from me because I resist the devil and his empty promises in the name of Jesus. The word of God is forever settled in heaven. Therefore, I establish God's word upon this earth in my life. So great is my peace and the peace of my family. For we are thought of the Lord Jesus. We are anointed and protected. We are blessed, we are wealthy, we are healthy. Nothing is missing, nothing is broken in our life and in the lives of our family. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a wonderful time. And now, Mr. Jocelyn is there for us. Those who are not talking and if you are unmute and if you are aware of that, please help us to mute yourself so that there is no disturbance in the Bible study so that sister's voice is clear for each and every one. So I welcome you all in the name of Jesus. And now Sister Jocelyn is there for us and she'll start preaching in the name of Jesus. Sister Jocelyn, welcome you. Praise, Praise God. Praise the us. Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Abba Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We praise you, Lord. 
we thank you jesus that today you reveal us the the mysteries and the secrets in your word you help us lord you reveal us the play the areas in our life that we have to make the correction your word is the mirror that shows us exactly who we are in the spirit and as we look into this mirror your word holy spirit we make this commitment to make the necessary correction in our life not to continue to live in a, in the same way that we were living but make the correction according to your word thank you holy spirit for this day thank you for your love thank you for your mercy thank you that you are dwelling in us and you are counseling us teaching us guiding us and always speaking to us to understand your word and to go in the right direction to discover the very purpose of our life lord i thank you and praise you and we thank you for anointing each one of our hearts and our ears to receive your word just like how when peter was speaking as he was preaching your word holy spirit fell on each of them the same way lord when your word is been preached it is your spirit that is convicting our heart it is your spirit that is bringing a change in our thinking thank you holy spirit you take complete control of my mind of my mouth and you speak your words and we thank you lord for confirming every word of yours with signs and wonders and in the name of jesus i bind every spirit of unbelief any kind of obstruction i bind you you satanic demonic influence i bind you in the name of jesus and i thank you lord i thank you jesus for taking complete control of the session in jesus name we pray amen 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 praise god thank you jesus praise the lord thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah okay uh so we learned Uh, about tongues uh, last week i believe most of you after that session practicing more in tongues speaking yes. more in tongues and uh, yes. and as we saw when the more we speak in tongues the more we get connected to the spiritual realm and the more we walk in the supernatural by default praise god thank you jesus okay now uh uh if if i would if you are if you would ask me who's the person that is mostly misunderstood i would say god is the person who is mostly misrepresented and misunderstood in this world yes it is because of the enemy and because of the lies and most of us even though we we are born in christian family and we are been you know we uh, we are be praying and we are going to church there so many lies that we still believe and i would say that god is a person who is the most misunderstood or misrepresented many a times you know how you feel if if uh, if you see a person who is a reason for uh, murders who is reason for uh, rapes who is re- reason for all kind of crime and you will you call such person as your friend no no but how many times we think that god is the one who is the reason for all the things happening in this world many times we think like that 
many times we think that think like that and we think that god is the one who's control in control of the things that is happening in this world and the reason why we think that god is the uh, is a reason for all the things happening is we think because god is all powerful there is no doubt in that no i'm not denying that god is all powerful and we think that because god is all powerful and he can do anything if he can he, he can do anything he can change anything he wants he can do whatever he wants if he can do anything and if he is all powerful then if he thinks he can change things in this world so if he is not changing things in this world then he is responsible for the things happening in this world correct yes now as i said yes god is all powerful but god is not in control of everything that is happening in this world now why is god not uh if god can change but at the same time we have to understand god god's nature and god's character now if i understand uh, god's uh, god's uh, nature his character god works on a system god will not violate the system yes. that's why if if you know god is the one who's in control of everything then we all will be like robots yes. we will never have any freedom to choose we will not commit sin at all exactly now now today if i uh, if i am committing sin if i if i am getting angry or i did something that is not right according to the word of god then i am responsible because i made the choice yes and god is not going to interfere in my choice if god is going to interfere in my choice then we all will be by default like a machine we only will speak good things and we only will do good things we have no freedom to choose yes that's why i said god is the one who's the most misrepresented in this world and god is not the bible says very clearly the devil is the one who has come to steal kill and destroy amen and God is not the author for any kind of evil that is happening in this world. Okay, for that we have to understand uh the you know we have to understand the basics. Okay. Yes. Now, when I as I said, everything that is physical or the spiritual, both the physical world and the spiritual world god has created them and it is on a system and it is it it functions based on laws for example we have law of gravity when somebody is going to jump from the uh, 10th floor now will god stop the law of gravity no no So if that person is going to fall from the 10th floor and die is it god who killed him no but did god create the law of gravity yes but did god create the law of gravity to kill that person no god did not create the law of gravity to kill the person god killed the law of gravity for our own good if the law of, law of gravity is not there we can't live a life like how we are living now in the same way god cannot change the law because of somebody's error praise god praise god okay when god okay let's go to genesis chapter 1 verse 
praise god okay and god said and god said god said means what god spoke words how did god create the universe he spoke words how did god create man you can say he created from the dust but actually he spoke before he created amen god god is a god who is a creator and god is a god who uses words to create god is a creator and god uses words to create, create. now god we we see in the book of genesis the the book of genesis the beginning from the beginning it talks about the creation in the beginning it starts the first verse in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth how did god create the heavens and the earth he spoke he spoke let there be light let there be birds let there be tree yielding fruits with seeds in it he spoke words and he created hallelujah now god creates man and when god has created man there is something uh, uh, very beautiful that we see in the 26th verse can you put that brother 26 yes okay god and god said let us let us make man in our image and our likeness so god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion now now pay attention to this word is he saying let us have dominion or is he saying let them have dominion let them have dominion is he saying let us and them have dominion or is he saying let them have dominion let them okay now when god speaks now you have to we we have to drill this in our mind when god speaks words it becomes a covenant when god speaks words it becomes a law when god speaks words he himself will not change his words now when you understand this character of god then we will understand why things happening in this world god cannot change the reason why god cannot change things happening in this world because god cannot change the words that he has spoken amen that's why god cannot change his words and when god speaks something he will not reverse it that's what can you put psalms 8934 yeah Eighty nine thirty four. Yeah, thirty four. Yeah. Okay. Now see this. My covenant, I will not break, nor alter 
the thing that is gone out of my lips now what is thing remember words, words are things words are things. things just like how we have physical things we have spiritual things and always remember the spiritual thing is always superior to the physical thing because anything that is physical has come out from the spiritual praise the lord praise the lord now when god is saying the thing now for example where light came from from his mouth thing that's why when we speak words when when i tell when i tell you can i tell you something now yes. i am saying can i tell you something because words are things now when god spoke let there be light the 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 substance for the for the physical thing called light is in the word okay now when god speaks words things that words that he speaks is a covenant and he will not break his words his covenant nor alter the thing that is gone out of his mouth that's what he's saying nor alter the thing that is gone out of my mouth hallelujah so if i understand this very well that god is a god who who creates by speaking words he created the entire physical and the spiritual we saw the heavens and the earth how by speaking words and when god spoke words the words that has come out from the mouth of god god will not violate it god will not break it god will not alter it god will not change it in fact god himself has to abide by his own words god cannot lie what he speaks is the truth that's it praise god whatever he speaks is the truth and nobody nobody can change it now if you understand this and then read Genesis one twenty six. Come back, brother, to Genesis one twenty six. Someone is unmuted, sister. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. okay now and god said let us man uh let us make man in our image after our likeness let them have dominion now when god said let them have dominion can he reverse these words no no we have to understand that god did not say let us and them have dominion God did not say let us have dominion no god said let man have dominion now man yes. is not god but he has he has been he the dominion in this earth is given to man the ownership in this uh, world is given to man to to be like god praise god praise the thank lord. you jesus okay you. now when god gave man the dominion god cannot reverse what he spoke and god cannot change his words now god did not give this dominion to the devil no god gave this dominion to man not to the devil this power is not given to the devil to us and what is the dominion he gave and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowls of the air over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth 
upon this earth. Now, if we see God used words to create and when God gave man the authority, the dominion, now God is giving man to use the same words to have dominion over this earth. And that's exactly what we see in Psalms 115 verse 16. Psalms 115 verse 16. Hundred and fifteen verse sixteen, right? Yes. Okay. See this. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. Is it clear here? The heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's. The heavens belongs to God, but the earth he has given to whom? To us. Now tell me, who is the one responsible for the things that is happening in this world? God or us? We. We. The scripture shows very clearly that God, that's why there is, why do you think there is no sickness in heaven? Because God is God in heaven. Yes. That's why there is no sickness, there is no fear, there is no worry, there is no danger, there is no evil in heaven. If God would be the God of this earth, then here also there would have not been anything that is evil. The very yes. reason that there is evil in this world, you know why I am speaking all this? Because I had all these questions. The devil, the devil tormented me when I was born again. You know, uh, uh, I think it was few months since I met Papa after I got born again. And in this few months, I went into terrible torture. I was not able to sleep. And the devil would put question in my mind, question after question. If you are believing, because till then, I, my question was whether there is a God or there is no God. The day I know that there is a God and there is only one God and, and, and Jesus died for me and he took and this God became a man and he took my sin on the cross. And I received him. But then when after I received Jesus, there is no doubt whether God, he is real or not. I know him. I know that he is real. But from that day onwards, the devil tortured me. If your God is a good God, then why is he allowing evil things is happening? If your God is a good God, God then why are people born like this? If your God is a good God, why can't he stop these things? And he would torment me. And at that time, I didn't even know that was a devil speaking. At that time, I didn't even know that uh, I, I, did not, I didn't even know how to handle the pressure that I was going through. And when I was trying to read the Bible in the Old Covenant, I, I did not understand. Because when I was reading in the Old Testament, I could see that uh, God is punishing people. He's asking the people to go and war with other country and kill them and all those things. And I see that God killed um, God destroyed the, uh, the Sodom and uh, Gomorrah. He, he destroyed the whole world with the flood. And I did not know because I was reading the Bible from the beginning. And uh, for me, it was such a uh, torment because G God was misrepresented. He, the, the, a different picture was shown to me about God. And the question is, how can I be good? You know, it looks like many times I have to tell God how to love. I have to tell God, Lord, see, this person is suffering. It looks like I can feel somebody suffering, but God cannot. Yeah. It looks like I feel I have more mercy than God. I have to tell God, Lord, have mercy on this person. This per person is going through this. And I was not able to comprehend how can I, I, you know, I know this God is good God, but it looks like my mother is, my mother has more love than God. My mother doesn't keep me hungry. Before I'm hungry, she would feed. But when it comes to God, I have to beg. I have to cry. I have to fast. That's good. And I went to torment until and unless 
when i got the right teachings and when i started to study the word and when i started to you know understand the truth that's the time i started to understand no god is a good god praise the lord but at the same time god has a nature he has a character he works on a system and that's yes. why the bible says my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge hosea 4:6 says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and he doesn't stop there he says because they have rejected knowledge my people sixth verse my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge praise god the the very reason that we go we are destroyed we go into destruction is because we don't have the right knowledge and all that the devil does is to bring you know the devil cannot do anything okay let me go slowly before i go to that point okay now god created man yes and god gave man all the dominion god yes. gave man all the authority yes correct now yes. god did not give the devil any authority in fact god did not create any devil god only created angels now remember when god created man or god created the angel god has given uh, the, his creation freedom to choose yes and we see that that this angel has rebelled against god and he wanted to exalt himself above god yes okay now the the angel lucifer okay he rebelled against god but god he did not have any power over this earth now when we see genesis 126 it's very clear that god gave man the dominion god did not give any angel dominion in fact if we see the other parts of the bible god actually sent the angels to assist us to minister us to help us but the dominion is given to whom to man praise god praise god now if man has the dominion there are many scriptures in the new testament that speaks that the devil as the god of this earth even jesus said if i you know if i am the ruler of this world this would have not happened and you know there is um, okay let me show you one scripture so that you will know take 2 uh, corinthians yeah uh, chapter 4 yeah i think uh, verse 4 yeah 2 corinthians 4 4 now see this in whom okay i'll read from third one okay but if our gospel be hid hid it it is hid to them that are lost okay the gospel is hid now who's hiding this gospel in whom the god of this world has blinded the minds of them which be not least the light of the glorious gospel of christ who is the image of god should shine unto them so here we see that the word i only i'm not going to go into other things only this word god of this world has blinded our minds so that they will not receive the gospel now who is the god small g okay who is the god of this world the enemy evil one the, the evil one exactly yes now when god created man god gave the dominion to man yes correct if yes. god had given and we saw that the heaven belongs to god and the earth belongs to man if god gave the dominion to man how did 
the devil become the god of this earth praise the lord it is because that we have not taken our responsibility in the right way we are the one who gave the chance for him to come and take the dominion over us not jesus not god yes now god did not give put uh, romans chapter 6 verse 16 Okay, know you not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. Now this scripture says, to whom I yield myself, servants to obey, obey. Okay, to whom I obey. that person becomes my master and i become his servant that's why adam disobeyed now what did adam do adam disobeyed god and he obeyed the enemy now the devil knew very well that the devil has no power no control of a man because man is the one who is created in the likeness and image of god and he is the one who has dominion yes and that's why if you see the garden did not come to choke or kill him or harm him do anything no because uh, the devil did not have any kind of authority to to control man or to have dominion over man or to or to destroy man but the devil is very very cunning very very subtle he comes and he he gives man suggestion he speaks lies yes praise the lord and when man obeyed that's why this it says know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey his servants you are to whom you obey the day man obeyed the devil man by his own choice became the servant and the devil became his master his servants you are to whom you obey whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness praise god and that's why we see jesus he obeyed his father how did he win the battle by obedience how did adam lose the battle by disobedience, disobedience. so who gave the devil the power we man. man now the power that uh, the devil has is not god who gave the devil any power it is we who had ownership it is we who who had the uh, uh, dominion over this earth and it is we because our own disobedience we gave man we may, we gave the devil the dominion yes praise god praise the lord thank you jesus now okay. now now are you understanding yes sister yes clear now yes now god cannot now man had made a mistake correct when god said you shall not eat the fruit the tree of the fruit of knowledge of good and evil remember the name of the tree is not apple the name of the tree is knowledge of good and evil now when god said that you should not eat this fruit the day you eat you shall surely die it's a law 
Now, whenever you read the Bible and when you see God speak something, the words that comes out of out from God's mouth, once he speaks, he will not violate it. He will not change it. He will not alter it. Now, the moment God said, they, they you eat this fruit of knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. Now, when Adam goes and eats it, or, Eve, or Adam eats it, can God change his words? No. No. The problem with us is, we compare God with us. We think God becomes angry and he, he, he makes decisions and anger he punishes. When God's mood is good, then he loves, he forgives us. Do we think like that? Yes. Because our moods are like that. We are like that. When our mood is nice, even if somebody, you know, if you parents, when your mood is nice, even your children do some mistake, you smile and you'll forgive. But when your mood is wrong, when you're angry, bitter, your spouse has done something, at that time you're irritated, even a small thing your child, son or daughter does, he is going to get. Yes. For us, it, it, it is based on other person's performance. It is based on our emotions. But God doesn't make decisions based on his emotion. His decisions are based on the words that he has spoken. Now, many people say when, when Adam ate the fruit, God got angry. No. It's a law. The, the, the moment God said, the day you eat, you shall surely, do, uh, surely die. It's a law. When God spoke, Okay, uh, let there be tree uh, bearing fruit with seeds in it. It's a law. Till today, every tree, it's bearing, you know, the tree that has flowers, the tree has fruits and it has seeds and they are multiplying. It is because what God spoke. It will not stop producing, reproducing. Praise the Lord. Because what God speaks, it's a law. That's why we never have a doubt whether tomorrow there will be a sun, sun will come or not. No, I will not doubt it because God is the one. His words is the one who created the sun and the moon and the earth and, 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 and everything is working on a system because God cannot change his word. In the same way, when God said, the day you eat the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, it's a law. The moment Adam died, that very moment he activated the law of sin and death. It's a law. Just like how a person is going to jump from the 10th floor, will he tell God killed me? No, it's the law. God kept the law. If you're going to jump, then it's going to kill you if you don't understand. In the same way, it is not that God came angrily and killed uh, Adam and Eve. It's a law. They, they, when, the moment they ate, the, they, they activated the law of sin and death because of disobedience. Oh, but God's love for them is the same. God's love did not change because of man's disobedience. No. God's love for man, did, uh, God's love for us is not conditional. Amen. In fact, man at that time, he was taking some leaves and wearing clothes but God had to come and kill an innocent animal and, 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 and put clothes of skin now what is that animal when God would have killed that animal the animal would have spoken and said I'm innocent what did I do why should I be killed that was the first sacrifice and God God, is, God loves his creation but God loves man so much. And that's the time the animal would have said, I'm innocent. And that's the time the father would have said, that's what I want. And that animal is no other than Jesus Christ. Her innocent blood should be shed for, for our shame to be covered. Hallelujah. And that's God's love. Right from the Genesis. You know, when I understood God's love, right from the book of Genesis, in the Old Testament, all I can see is love. Everything in the Old Testament, I can only see love. Okay. Only when I understand his nature. Only when I understand his character. 
Now, because man disobeyed, God cannot violate his word and say, okay, you made a mistake. Uh, now, let me take control. No, he can't violate his word. He can't change his words that he has spoken. He can't reverse the process. The moment, the, the moment Adam disobeyed, that very moment, the law of sin and death got activated in this world. And because of sin, there is consequences. That's when sickness came. That's when fear came, worry came, disease came, death came. Everything came as a consequences of sin. Praise God. But God has a purpose. God, has, God had a plan. God had a plan of redemption. The Bible says, even before the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. You know, that means what? Even before he, you know, if a mother can cook food for me, even before I, I become hungry, even before I would think I'm hungry, my mother can cook food. The Lord, my God, even before he created me, he had a solution. And then he created me. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If we think it is we who have to cry out and call him, no. Even before he created, he made the choice that I will die for you, even if you are going to make a mistake to rescue you. God would have said, if you have made a mistake, then, then you have to bear the consequences. No. That's why God has to come as a man in this world. Hallelujah. Because only a man has dominion in this earth. That's why, why, why should I pray? Do I, should, I, should I ask my, should I kneel down and pray? Only then my mother will give me? No. But why I have to pray? The reason I have to pray is because, I, because of my own wrong choice, I have made the devil the, the God. I, I gave the authority to devil. But when I pray, I'm cooperating with God. That's why God's plan of salvation can never come to this earth without man cooperating with God. From the beginning, God is looking out for someone who can cooperate with him to bring his plan into this earth. That's why even when Jesus prayed, he said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. The kingdom that is now in this earth is not God's kingdom. But, but when I become born again, I belong to a different kingdom. And now I come in, I'm translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. And now the new kingdom is established in me and in you, those who believe in Christ. And when we go and preach the gospel, we are establishing God's kingdom in this earth. Thank you, Jesus. And when God's kingdom is established, that's the time we see the will of God is being fulfilled. How? By healing the sick, by opening the uh, blind eyes. Blind eyes, not only physical blind eyes. Blind eyes, the, we, we just now we saw that the devil of this world has blinded to see the truth. By preaching the gospel, the blind eyes are open so the person can see the truth. And that's how we establish his kingdom. We are supposed to establish his kingdom by preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are Thank you understanding? You. Yes, sister. Yes. Okay. Now, when God gave man all the power, and all the authority. Now, this power that God has given man is in his words. Okay? That's why the Bible says that life and death is in the power of my tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. Life and death is in the power of my tongue. Now, I'm supposed to speak words of life 
but because man had become a servant to to the devil and the devil has become master now all that the man is speaking is what death death oh, no. now remember the devil is using man's power the devil is using man's mouth the devil is using man's word because who's having the dominion man and all that the devil has to do is he has to give man suggestions the only weapon that the devil uses is giving suggestions lies and when i believe those lies and when i receive those suggestions that's the time i open my mouth and speak death yes and that's how this world is filled with evil it's because of our own words yes praise god yes. okay let's go to hebrews uh, chapter 1 from verse 1 If yes. if somebody can put uh, verse one two three in amplified in the chat. Okay. Now see this. God, who at sundry times, and in diverse manners. spoke in past times unto the fathers by the prophets now we see from the beginning god is seeking people who can cooperate with him that's why when god saw abraham cooperating with him who was ready to hear his voice and walk with him that's why god made a covenant and 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 that's how god blessed abraham's descendants through abraham so that the the very purpose is it's not that god wants to only save israelites no 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 his plan is to it is salvation to to bring salvation to the entire earth but he cannot bring the plan of salvation cannot come into this earth that's why we should understand it is not that god can do anything no god has to god cannot violate his word god cannot violate the law god cannot come and just jesus can just come to this earth and die without man cooperating with god if mother mary would have not said let let it be done according to your will do you think jesus would have come no no if mother mary would have not said yes if she would have said how can i what will the people speak about me they will stone me to death if she would have not agreed it would have not happened say god's purpose god has purpose yes god has plan the plan of redemption is even before the foundation of the earth but we have to cooperate with god for god's purpose to be fulfilled fulfilled in this earth and god that's why from the beginning god has been seeking for people who is ready to cooperate with him so that they will agree god's word and speak god's word now in the creation if you see in the beginning god spoke and everything was created but when man has given the dominion now god cannot speak on this earth because man has given the dominion now man is the one who has to speak because man is the one who's given we saw that the heaven belongs to god and the earth is been given to mankind so man is been given the dominion in this earth so any of god's purpose has to be spoken by man amen that's why we see all these prophets they coming and they speaking about messiah about that's why we see that david is speaking about how jesus was you know how he was uh, now uh, every bone of his body was out of joint how how they pierced his hand and isaiah is coming and speaking they all were coming and they were agreeing god's purpose to speak and today also we have to cooperate with god and take his word and prophesy and speak so that his purpose will be fulfilled in this earth hallelujah 
if we don't speak god's word then by default we are going to speak the words of the enemy any words that we speak that is contradicting to the words of god is words of those words that bring death and destruction because the the plan of the devil is to kill steal and destroy and the devil cannot still kill and destroy if you and i agree with god and speak god's word praise the lord and all that the devil does is to convince us to believe the lie so that we open our mouth and speak the lies now when i speak the lies what happens i'm allowing the devil legal permission to bring destruction steal kill and destroy praise god praise god you want to put that scripture sister john 10 10 john 10 10 okay you can put that it's good that we show them the scripture okay see this the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy so the devil has come to steal kill and destroy and how can he do that he can do that how did the devil kill still and destroy from adam he came and he spoke words he gave suggestions when they obeyed the words when they accepted the words and acted on it they allowed the devil to kill steal and destroy and to even today if i believe the lie and agree the lie and speak the lie i have given the devil legal access to steal kill and destroy that's why you know when, when god did not want adam and eve to have the knowledge of evil he did not want them to have the knowledge of evil that's why he said do not eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil if they would have not had the knowledge of evil there is there is no corruption and all that the devil does is to give us the knowledge of evil and all the information that we receive the evil knowledge that's when we corrupt our own self and that's when corruption is in our mind and corruption is in our mouth yes and that's how the devil brings destruction praise god praise thank god. you jesus okay thank brother you. can go back to hebrews uh, 11:1 yeah okay now see this uh, not 11:1 sorry sorry One, 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 one,
he appointed higher and lawful owner of all things through whom also he created the universe that is the universe as a space time matter continuum okay now here okay I, i'll come to um, kjb as in these days in these last days spoken unto us by his son that's what we see in in amplified we see the character and the nature of jesus has in this last days spoken unto us by his son who whom he has appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds now how was the worlds created by the word that's what we see in john 11 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and that word became flesh and that word is jesus so in the last days god is speaking to us through his son jesus by whom all whom also he made the worlds now who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his father now the word express image if you see in the amplified it says that reflecting god's shekinah glory and light being the brilliant light of the divine and the exact representation and perfect imprint of his father's essence okay let me explain to you what i read now in the old testament god spoke to us through the prophets right yes yes in the new testament god is spoke jesus came into this earth and he spoke to us through his son correct yes this scripture says yes god spoke to through the prophet but jesus is the exact representation and perfect imprint of his father father's essence he is the express image of the father in other way if i have to know who is god then the only person who has perfectly represented god is jesus he is the only expression that's what amplified says he is the only expression in kjv we see that and the express image of his person nobody else is going to ex- is going to express his image he's going to represent his image he's going to represent the father the only way i can know who god is i can know is through jesus now why i'm saying i'm stressing on this again and again is because when the disciples when they were with jesus uh, they called fire from heaven like elijah yes now why are they doing it because they saw the prophets doing it and what did jesus do jesus rebuked them then my question is in the old covenant why did the prophets do that and why is jesus rebuking it if i want to know who really god is then i can know god only through jesus not by anybody else in the bible yes. because in the old testament god allowed certain things to happen because he loves mankind now for example i'll make it even more simple for example if a man has gangrene in his leg gangrene in his leg what will the doctor do if it is spreading so fast it's spreading really very fast what will the doctor do he will cut that part he will amputate and he'll cut the leg now when you only take that action of cutting somebody stopping somebody's leg okay well yeah is it will we say it is cruelty no only if he, if he is not a doctor and somebody is stopping the leg then then it is uh, yes it's, it's cruelty 
it's yeah. a crime that you if you see that person you don't have any mercy yes if i only see the action it looks like cruelty but if i see the purpose then i know if the the doctor is not amputing because he's angry but actually he loves the person he wants he actually wants to save that person's life he actually wants to save the person and the only way to save the person is to ampute that part yes in the same way in the old covenant god told the for example god go, god told um saul to go and kill the amalekites when i read that in the beginning god why are you asking uh, saul to go and kill everyone everyone kill everyone how can you say that and then i understood if 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 saul is not going to kill those amalekites okay they are going to get mixed married with the israelites and every time they got mixed mixed married you know what happened to the kings of uh, israel they started to worship false god not only worship false god some of the kings even gave the children as sacrifice to the false god now if Abra if if uh, if um, king david seed jesus has to come in the in the lineage of king david correct the line of juda if these children are going to give their children as sacrifice to false god now can god's purpose be fulfilled of salvation no no now god has to kill sodom because if god is not going to kill sodom the sin was so much it is sin is like a in a contagious virus if god will not wipe away sodom they will impact the whole world and the whole world will be corrupt that there will not be any salvation anymore in this planet earth in the even in the time of noah the only person it was not that noah was committing no sin no he also had committed sin but he was the only person who was in this planet earth without corruption means the only person who was ready to um, cooperate with god and the whole world was so much and, and the sin that was in the in the old testament they were giants i don't know why how they became like that but the sin was so much evil that they were they were fallen from human humanity there is no more male and female they were having just like how it is happening again started now it is actually happened in the beginning noah's time they having they were they were they were having men and men relationship women and women relationship they actually fell from humanity if that would if god would have not wiped away the the entire world at that time then the messiah would have not able to come yes so if we understand god's god's uh, nature then everything that has happened in this world god does not have direct control god cannot do everything like how he wants without man cooperating now god has legal right to judge and punish man he would have punished now because of sin god has the right to punish everyone it would be easy from god's part to to pour his wrath on us and punish us and send to hell or we all live in 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 fallen state in, in an entire eternity yes but god did not do that but god did not do that he would have just punished us he would have given us what we deserve and he would have finished the chapter but god did not do that that's why in the old testament we see the wrath of god yes we see god's punishment but that is not god's ultimate plan and the very reason why god was punishing also is not to destroy them but actually to save them through the plan of salvation praise god hallelujah thank you jesus and that's what we see in the third verse who jesus who's that who jesus jesus being the brightness of his glory and the express image of the father his person now see this upholding all things by the word of his power which he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high 
praise god now jesus who is the word who is the express image of the father okay i, I will read it in the um, amplified okay the sun is the radiance and the only expression of the glory of a awesome god reflecting god shekina glory the light being the brilliant light of the divine and the exact representation and perfect imprint of his father's essence so jesus so if i have to know jesus if i have to know father i ha can know the father only by jesus that's why when jesus was in this earth he did not condemn any of the sinners he did not condemn the prostitute he did not condemn the tax yeah. collector he did not condemn the thief in fact he extended mercy and he extended forgiveness and for me to know god the only way i can know who god is through jesus christ this god is somebody's mic okay yeah. now now see this we are going to learn something here now we saw god in the begin okay let's put that john 1 1 okay in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god now the word was god means jesus is the same yesterday today and forever that means if god was the word god is the word correct the lord yes hallelujah and who is the word jesus himself is the word and and from him is what everything has come see this yes. and the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him without him was was not anything that was made so in the beginning was god and and that word was god and and the word was with god and the word was god and the same thing and the same was in the beginning with god that is jesus the word and all things made by him whom through the word that is through jesus and without him without jesus without the word was was not anything made that was made so jesus is there from the foundation because he is the word and from the word is what everything has come and we see the, can you put the 14th verse 14th 14 14 yes Fourteen. Forty. Okay. All right. One four. Yeah, and see this. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And behold, his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. and this word is was made flesh and dwelt among us that is jesus now we have to remember that god and his word are not two different god and his word are the same and jesus is that word and that jesus the word everything came from that word and that jesus word became flesh and the only way i can know who god is is through jesus and through his word amen now now come back brother to hebrews 1:3 okay who being the brightness of his glory that is jesus and the express image of his father 
and upholding all things by the power by the word of his power and upholding all things now i want you to listen to this upholding all things upholding all things okay. amplify tells upholding maintaining propelling all things it 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 amplifies it's not just upholding it's upholding upholding maintaining and propelling okay. praise god now okay. if we see the world is been upholded the earth is in its place the sun is in its place the moon is it in, it is in its place and if you see the water that we drink today is created when god created the earth but is it maintained is it purified yes how by the word of god is the sun and the moon going and clashing each other no is it upholded in its place is it running in its own orbit yes how by his word now okay. everything in this world is created and it is upholded it is maintained it's propelling now i want you to notice this by the word of his power by the word of his power when i when i learned this read this for the first time i took it like this by the power of his word by the power of his word but then the holy spirit said no 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 not by the power that is in his word but by the word of his power now what is the difference this means jesus is word means is okay means see when i say power in the word means there is some power in the word there is a there is a portion of power in the word correct but it is not saying there is power in the word it's saying the word is the power mm, yes praise god the word it's you can't say there is power in the word the word is the, all the power is there in the word by the word of his power his power is in the word everything the, the the everything in this world in the universe has come from the power that is in the word that's why it says by the word of his power by the word the word has his power the word is the power it doesn't have a part of power the word it's the, are you understanding yes yes sister that is the power that that, that created everything by the word of his power Amen. how Amen. the bible every word every uh, every statement has meaning in it oh yes sister praise god hallelujah we think that word has some power no 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 uh, the power uh, you know the, the word of his power his power the word itself is power and everything that i see the power that i see uh, what are the things that's why the bible says the things that we are seeing is created by god's word now what happens is when i receive the word and when i uh, when i take the word and when i plant that seed in my heart i am receiving this power his power the word of his power in me wow the yes. power yes. that has created the universe is in me and god has given man the dominion to use power to create can you imagine god has created us in his likeness and image to use this power yes hallelujah we are created like god and we are god has given us dominion to rule over this planet earth by using the power that god has given us hallelujah thank you jesus and what we lost what man lost in the garden of eden jesus really? came to this earth and he restored it back to us because of the sacrifice 
the price he paid on the cross. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And what happened on the cross? Many people don't understand what happened on the cross. What happened on the cross is sacrifice. Because a spot, spotless, sinless blood has to be shed for the sin. There is no other remedy for sin. There is no other. If, if, I, if, if you can go to the doctor to, to treat your body, treat your mind, you can take medicine. But the root of everything is sin. If I don't deal with sin, there is no way out. The consequences of sin is sickness, all other things. And Jesus dealt with that sin. He took our sin on himself. He became a substitute for us. And that's how he has reconciled us back to him through his son, Jesus Christ. And that's the ministry of reconciliation. Now, what is the word reconciliation? The word reconciliation means restoring friendship after a war. Because of sin, there was enmity between God and man. Yes, God was not angry. But as long as there is sin, God cannot, God cannot, um, as long as there is sin, God cannot, God is holy God. And there is yeah. punishment. And because God is holy, sin has to be punished. And there is wrath. But what did God do? God put all his anger, all his wrath, all the punishment, and he poured it on Jesus. His only son. Jesus. Now, God is no longer angry with you or me. God is not angry with you or me because he, he, he poured all his wrath on Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And Jesus paid the price. And the day I received Jesus Christ as my Lord, God and Savior, I am reconciled again. Now what, now what I'm speaking, it has to be taught even more in depth. I'm just giving an outline. We will learn on that. What happened on the cross. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. And God has given us his word. That's why when I see the Bible, I'm supposed to imitate God. Now, when God, when God created man in his like and image, God gave the dominion. Now, God is telling us to rule over this earth. And Jesus, who came to this earth, he actually demonstrated us. He did not show us who God is. He was showing us the dominion that is given to man. And when Jesus is resurrected from the death, now Jesus is saying, as the son of man, I have authority in this earth. As the son of God, I have authority in heaven and hell. And now I'm giving you my authority. Now you have authority not only on this earth, but also over the paths of darkness. And what you bind on the earth is bound in heaven. Can you see what authority God has given now? Much yes. more. Yes. And all that we have to understand is this word of his power is given to us. Now, again, the freedom of choice is with me. Am I going to take the word of God and speak the word and use my authority, the dominion which God has given, or I'm going to take the words of the enemy and speak death? If I see evil in this world, if I see things are going wrong in this world, I am responsible. How I am responsible? Because God has given me the dominion. Now I have to open my mouth and speak words. And I have to bind that sickness. I have to speak to the mountain. I have to speak to the poverty. I have to speak to the blindness. I have to speak to the infirmity. I have to speak to the problem. And I have to speak the word of God and I have to call things that is not there as, as if, it, as if it, it is there. I have
have to call things from the unseen into the seen. Because God has created me in his likeness and image and God has given me the dominion and authority. And God's purpose cannot come into this earth without man cooperating with God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Praise Jesus. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, uh, even uh, the, the field of, uh, if, if somebody would have heard this word, even I don't know much about it, but I have read some articles about it, about quantum physics. And uh, it's, it, it, we, you know, we, we all know that if we would have studied in school about molecules, the, the very, very uh, small substance, if you go very down, it is atom. An atom is supposed to be the smallest particle. Yes. It's the smallest particle. And, and they say that when you divide, uh, uh, when you, if you break an uh, atom, then if you go even more, then there are subatomical particles. And quantum yes. physics says that these subatomical particles, they are very different. In fact, science cannot understand how are these atoms are holding to each other. They actually cannot held each other together. And then the Bible says these are held together by the word of his power. We just now saw in, in Hebrews 1.3. Everything is being upholded. How? By the word of his power. His power is the word. His power is not in the word. His power is the word. And how is everything held? How is everything upholded? By his word. And science can understand how is that everything is together. Every, how is all the substance holding? How are the molecules held together? Nobody can understand. But we can understand because the Bible says everything is upholded by the word of his power. Hallelujah. And the same science says that these subatomical particles, that they react very different. In, in fact, when you see something, they look different. And when you don't see, they look different. That means... Science says that everything in this world, it actually changes according to how we see and speak. Even science is proving it, that the whole world changes itself according to the words that we speak. Yes, hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why we have to go to the science? We have the word of God. Yes, hallelujah. And you know what it is? That means if God, I, I, listen to this, okay? If God would violate any word that he has spoken, the whole universe, the whole creation will collapse. Yes, yes. Because everything is upholded by the word of his power. His word Lord. is his power and everything is upholded. If God changes or violates his word that he has spoken, then everything in this universe will collapse. And that's why uh, your faith and my faith is not on our own because we know that God's word cannot be altered or changed. If God said when the believer lay hand on the sick, the sick has to be healed, then God cannot change it. If I lay hand on a hand on the sick, the sick has to be healed. Yes. That gives me the confidence. If Jesus said, speak to this mountain, be uprooted and be cast into the sea, without doubting in your heart, it has to happen. Because his word can never change. He cannot alter his word. The day he alters or he changes his words, that very moment, the whole universe collapses. Because everything is upholded by the power of his word. Praise the Lord. Are you understanding? Yes. And now all that we have to understand is God has given us the same power to create and to destroy life and death. Now, when I understand that this power, the word of his power, is when I take the word that the power 
the, the word is the power. I receive that power. That is, that is the word. And when I start speaking the word of God, every day I release this power. The power that creates. That's why we are created in the likeness and image of God to create. And that's why, that's why when somebody says a kidney is missing, God has given you the power to create a new kidney. Hallelujah. If I see that somebody is having a sickness, God has given us the power to create health. But remember, this power, it's not yours and mine. It is God's and that power is in the word. And it is word itself is the power. When I take that word and I speak, I'm releasing this power. I'm releasing the power. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we have the choice whether this world is going to live in darkness or this world is going to be translated into light. That's why the Bible says we are the light of this world and we are the salt of this earth. If we fail to shine light, then the, then the people around us are going to be in darkness. And who's responsible? You and I, not God. Yes, amen. And that's when I realized that I'm the one who's responsible. And God has a plan for you and God has a plan for me. All that I have to do is cooperate with God and take his word and speak it every day. The more I speak every day, the more I'm bringing God's purpose in this earth. I'm establishing God's kingdom on this earth. Yes. And, and that's God. why God has sent his angels charge over us. And the Bible says in Psalms 103 verse 20 that the angels hearken to the voice of God. The spoken, they hearken to the uh, spoken word. Of, can you put the scripture brother? Yes. 100, 100, is... Psalms 103 verse 20. The spoken voice of God. Hundred and twenty. Hundred and three. Yes. Verse twenty. Bless the Lord, you his angels, that excel excel in strength that do his commandments, hearken unto the voice of his word. Now, the angels are given to us in this world. Now remember, we saw there is a kingdom and the devil is the god of this world. And who gave the godship? We gave him. When, when, when man disobeyed. Correct? When Jesus yes. came, whoever believed Jesus, they are translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. That's now, perfect. when we are in the kingdom of light, that now we belong to a different kingdom. Remember, we are living in this world, but we do not belong to this world because this kingdom, this world is under a different kingdom. The day I am born again, I'm translated into a different kingdom. I'm living in this world, but I'm representing Christ. I'm, that's why I'm the ambassador for Christ, because I and you, we belong to a different kingdom. That's why we don't make decisions based on this kingdom. See, now, uh, if a person uh, belongs to a particular uh, country, if you are a citizen of that country, you can enjoy the privileges of that country. Correct? Yes. In the same way, when I belong to the kingdom of God, I have the privileges of my kingdom. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, when the ambassador is in a foreign country, who is supplying all his, who is giving, who is paying his money, who is the source, his own country. In the same way, when I am in this kingdom, I, when I belong to God's kingdom and when I'm in this planet earth, 
my mm. economy is not based on the economy of this earth that's the problem we are we belong to a different kingdom but we are think we are worried of like the people of this world why should i be worried i belong to a different kingdom they belong to a different kingdom i belong to a different economy they belong to a different economy why should you see the news and be panicked when somebody lost the job why you should be panicked when you see the economy is going down that is talking the news that you see in the tv is talking about the kingdom of this earth but your kingdom and my kingdom the bible says my supply is uh, god supplies all my needs according to his riches in christ my kingdom is in christ my supply is according to the kingdom in heaven and in heaven there is there is no economic fall so don't worry hallelujah i am in this earth but i don't we do not belong to this earth. the day we are born again remember this world is been the the god of this earth is the enemy but we are translated into a different kingdom and we are in a different kingdom and we are ambassadors for christ and because jesus won the battle on the cross now not only we are in a different kingdom we have authority over the kingdom of darkness hallelujah and god has given us the power to establish his kingdom in this earth how by preaching the gospel right. now the angels the angels are given to us uh, uh, can you put that hebrews 114 and then we'll come back to psalm 103 yes hebrews 114 and then we'll come back to psalm 103 is it okay is it becoming late no 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 we have got time another uh, 39 okay. no yeah as uh, hebrews uh, hebrews 114 It is so interesting, sister. Actually, even new yes. new truths are revealing. Praise God! Yes, the word of God is actually very interesting. Now, see this. Are you not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Now, the angels are ministering spirits, and why they are sent? see the previous verse if if you say ministering spirits then you will say it is talking about spirits but it is given in the 13th verse but to which of the angels is it talking about angels yes it, it's okay so the ministering spirits are what it's the angels. angels so are they not all ministering spirits so the angels are ministering spirits the angels are sent to this world to minister praise god for what sent forth they are sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation now we are translated into the kingdom of god we are the heirs of salvation and god has given his angels for us to minister us now remember we are in a different kingdom we are in this earth we are in a different kingdom and in this kingdom just like how in this world there is a police department and they have a, a you know the uh, force police department and there is a police force and uh, enforcement of law they have a law in the kingdom and they have and the, the the police officers they enforce the law and if they don't enforce they in the same way we have the kingdom of god and we have the laws and we know the kingdom of laws in the bible in the word of god and we have given angels who are ministers who are sent to minister to us but but the angels now come to 10320 psalm 10320 yeah see bless the lord you his angels that excel in strength now the angels are very strong okay that do his commandments now what does the angel do they do god's commandment 
okay now we saw in in hebrews 1:14 that god sent them so they are sent by god and they come to do god's commandment and then hearkening unto the voice of his word they hearken to the voice of his word now when we speak his word are we giving voice to god's word yes when i speak the word of god because the word of god is god's power when i take the word of god and when i speak the word of god every day in the physical it might look like i'm just speaking words no you're not just speaking words when i'm speaking words it's 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 the power the power of his word every power is in his word and and this power when i speak the whole kingdom of god the the angelic force that god has assigned and he has sent to minister us they hearken when i open my mouth and say that all my needs are supplied according to his riches they immediately take that word and they go and bring things into your life resources into your life money into your life promotion into your life the angels are sent to go and bring souls into your life to go and bring the right people into your life to fulfill your assignment now we all have a purpose and we all have a god given assignment when i start speaking that's why jesus had to take the book and he had to open from the book of isaiah and he had to speak and he had to find his place and open his mouth and say the spirit of the lord is upon me my god himself has anointed me jesus himself had to open his mouth and speak in the same way you and i we have to take the word and speak it every day and god has sent his angels and these angels they will hearken to the voice of our word so every day when i speak words of protection the angels take those words and when there is a time of danger they protect us don't we don't even know but if i don't speak if i don't give voice to god's word even though the angels are assigned they cannot move without we speaking god's word hallelujah because the angels they do his commandments and they hearken unto the voice of his god that means every day if we take the scriptures from the bible and we keep speaking the we are giving we are actually uh, you know the entire uh, um, kingdom of god is active in this world that they, that's why i have to pray in tongues i have to speak the scripture now i'm releasing the raw material i'm bringing the substance from the unseen into the seen that we will learn on another day and then i'm releasing the angels to go and fulfill god's purpose amen thank you jesus praise god praise thank you god. jesus now thank are you god. understanding how it is very important for us to speak god's word yes sister very clear praise yes. the lord Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Any more doubts? Any doubts? No, sister, sister, yes, only uh, this scripture yeah. that you know the angels are their ministering spirit. That means uh, is that if there is no preacher, then they can't go and minister people, right? Because someone need to explain or speak the word. See, they are not going to minister. They are going to help those who are preaching. They are ministering means. See, the word minister means. uh serving see jesus came not to uh, not to be ministered but to minister means jesus did not come to uh, be served but to serve the word ministering is serving so the angels okay. have come to help us not to preach no for example if you see um, the angel goes and speaks to cornelius and tells that peter is going to come and the angel goes and tells peter you have to go to cornelius but now why can the angel itself get preach to uh, cornelius no the angel can't do that only okay. help now when when peter when uh, peter was in the prison what did the angel do the angel came and woke up uh, peter and said get up and brings out now why can't the angel go and do the job why the angel has to come and speak to peter 
Why the angel has to come in the different places in the Bible we see, they actually assist, but the preaching of the gospel they cannot do, only you and I can do. And nobody can be born again without preaching of the gospel. The angels will go and bring the souls to us when we speak the word of God, when we pray in tongues. The angels will help us to go and reach in that place at that right time. They will help us to bring the resources at the right time. They will go and, you know, when we speak the word, they will go and, do, they will go and spiritually uh, do everything for us. But the preaching has to be done by us. Praise the Lord. In fact, even Papa tells, even they go and bring the organs from the, from the spiritual new kidneys, the spare parts, they bring it. But the speaking I have to do, only when I speak, then they go and do it. That's why they hearken to the voice of, of his word. That's why the preaching part is mine. Nobody else can do it. Only you and I have to do. Praise God. When I preach, then they do the other things in the spiritual realm. How no? That's why God created us like Him. Yes. To speak. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. So hearkening means they are listening our words. Exactly. Yes. Praise the Lord. And many times, you know, when we struggle uh, with our own strength, they are actually they they they, they uh, my imagination. Huh? They must be actually thinking, why can't you open your mouth and speak the word of God? It's my job, not your job. And you oh, can't do it in the physical. There are things that has to be done in the spiritual, not in the physical. And all that you have to do is to activate the spiritual realm by speaking his word. But when I speak words of death, I'm operating, I'm allowing, I'm giving permission to the demons. That's why for us, oh, I just said for fun. I just said like that. You did not mean it, but the devil meant it. Because you're not just someone you are created in the likeness and image of God. You may not know the value of your words, but the devil knows the value. The angels knows the value. That's why every word that comes out of my mouth, it counts. Yes. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Praise yeah. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And that's why Jesus is telling us to speak to this mountain. Yes. Because we have the dominion. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Anybody? Any other doubt? Is anyone, if you're having any doubt, please raise your hands up. Sister is there. And uh, sister, we and don't feeling. feel like stop this teaching. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Yes. It is really. In fact, in fact, even even if, if to tell the truth, even I did not know from where to where to go where. Yes. But uh, the Lord knows. The Holy Spirit knows. Praise God. And these, these things, what I learned is it, the, it is the answers for all the questions I had. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. Even I had this, all the questions, sister. Today is cleared. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Because the devil is the same. You know, he puts the same lies. Wherever I go, they have the same doubt. I, I say, oh, you devil, you, you can't even give a new lie. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, brother. Yes, there is a sister who raised the hand up, sister. Uh, yeah, Shalini. Yeah, you can unmute, sister. I already sent you the invitation to unmute. Yeah, good evening, sister. Good evening, sister. sister yes. In the, in the beginning, you said yeah. when you first came into the word, yeah. you were saying you felt like you had to tell God, be merciful to this person. And when yeah. you were reading the scripture, you could not yeah. understand. Um, why is he telling everyone, you know, kill everyone? I sometimes have that kind of thing, but I want to ask you, this is my question. How did you get the understanding, the right understanding? How did you come to know? Because, because uh, sister, when I started to, uh, first of all, when I got the teaching of the mm. sower and the seed, and then when I started to see Jesus, that's why I, when I took Hebrews, uh, one, one, two, three. It talks that only, 
only through Jesus. When I started to see Jesus uh, in every way, right from the woman with the uh, who was caught in the adultery, the Pharisees, mm. the the tax collectors, when I see that, I could only see love coming out from him. See, my answer is not just I got in one day, but mm. when I started to understand the nature of God, it was like uh, I see, I spend in a day. 17, eight, not anything less than 17, 18 hours studying the word. Mm. Only because of me spending so much time in the word, I would go and I did not study like the whole Bible. Even till today, I had never studied the whole Bible. But the teachings that I had, I thank God for uh, mm. Papa Johnson was given us the teachings all free. The teachings I had, I would only take a one portion of that and I would put, go, mm. I would go again deep in it. And it took a lot of time for me to get understanding. But in the beginning, the very beginning, the very first day I met, uh, you know, now I, see, for almost two, three months, I was in a kind of depression. I was not able to come out of my room. I was because mm. I was not getting the answer. I was getting those questions that was tormenting me. The very, yes, very yes, first, yes. the very, very first time when I met Papa Johnson, it was a three days meeting from morning till night. It was like God mm. speaking to me through him. And I don't know and what he spoke. All your questions answered. Mm. Exactly. And what he was saying is again and again, it is the devil who has come to mm. still mm. kill and destroy. And he was speaking on that again and again. And he was saying, it is Jesus who has come to give life. And he actually demonstrated that now you and I have the authority to command and cast out these demons. And he was calling people. Then I could see, oh, this is God's will that we have to be healed. And it's the devil who has come to steal, kill and destroy. That I understood. I understood all good things have come from God. And there is an enemy who wants to destroy. That is the part I understood. But later on, when mm -hmm. I went deeper into the word, I understood it, that it became more and more clear. You know, it, I started to see the scriptures more and more clear. And the whole Bible is talking about God's love. Okay. Because no one explained that, you know, if God didn't destroy the whole earth uh, during the time of Noah, then we would lose the chance to get the Messiah. And same with Sodom and Gomorrah. I never could you know, I could never understand like that. Thank you for explaining. Praise God. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, my sister. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Because I know that the God, that's why uh, for me, it's very, when I go and preach among um, the doctors, the lawyers, and, uh, you know, it's the reason is I don't go and preach um, some theory. I'm going and teaching the very thing what God has answered me. And, and I know God has been misrepresented. God is completely misrepresented. God has been shown as a different God who, who, who really he is not so. God is so amazing. He's so awesome. He's so loving. He's so, if you ask me, I have understood his love. Point, point, zero, zero, zero. There is so much, he's, you know, my prayer would be that for Sister Shalini, my prayer never, I, my prayer, was never, Lord, I want this, I want that. My prayer from the beginning, the day I born again, Lord, I want to know you. Jesus, I want to know you. The, that's the reason why the devil tormented me because I was seeking God. I want to understand you. I want to know your heart. The more I started to thirst and hunger to know him, the more he revealed himself. The problem is we want to, most of the time our prayers are, we want healing, we want blessing, we want job. But we, we have to seek him. We have to seek uh, to know him. Our, 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 we should, you know, God, want, we have to have friendship with him. We have to walk with him. God has to become very real to us. He has to become our best friend. You know, the only person whom I know the most is he. The, the only person I'm very close to is to him. We have to come to that place. It's walking with him. When I read, uh, you know, when I read the Bible for the first time, for the very, very first time, when I read Enoch, I was so amazed. Enoch walked with God and God took him away. I'm like, Lord, he was walking with him. What is this walking with you? Then I started to ponder, what is this walking with the Lord? I want to walk. And Jesus is calling uh, uh, David, my friend. Abra Moses, my friend. The one with, of my own heart. God is calling even in the Old Testament, my friend. 
I want to be the friend of God because friends share all the secrets. Yeah. And once we become his friend and when we start seeking him, it is all about um, our thirst and hunger, how much thirsty and how much we are hungry and how much we, 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 are, we are, you know, wanting to know the more he reveals because more than us, it is he, he wants to speak to us more than us. In the beginning, I thought it was I who was seeking him, but later on, I understood right from my child, right before I was in the mother's womb, it is he who was speaking to me constantly, but I was busy and made my heart hardened with so many things. But at one point of time, I started to recognize his voice and accept him. Mm. Praise God. That is beautiful. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, and the more we read the Bible, like when you realize... reach this point, when yeah, yeah, sister. When you reach this point, sorry to interrupt. Do you mm -hmm. still get tormented and temptation and trials and? Okay, now uh, I'll tell you. At one point, I got set free. How I got set free is not because the question stopped. Okay, mm. not because the question stopped. The question did not stop, but uh, the questions were coming and coming and coming. Uh, uh, then I realized, just like how a baby is a born, the baby needs mother's milk. In the same way, I realized I'm a baby yeah. born in Christ, and I should be. I should feed myself constantly with the milk called the Word of God. Okay, yeah. now, as I was feeding myself with the milk day and night. The questions were coming. At that time, the Holy Spirit gave me an answer. The Holy Spirit gave me an answer for those questions. I don't know the answer, but I know that God is a good thing. My brain did not understand it, but I know God is good. Praise God. Yeah. That put a stop for those questions. Now, when the questions started mm. to come again and again, I said, I don't understand now. I don't understand now. But I know one thing, mm. God is a good God and only good things come. If I can't understand us, how can a small seed produce such big tree? And how can us from a small seed so many fruits come? I can't understand. It's a mystery. So mm. God is so big. And I can't understand everything because it's a mystery. But I know one thing, God is good. If, if, if a man like me, a, a human like me wants justice, God's judgment is so just he will never do something that's wrong in mm. fact he is he is full of mercy full of love god, bible doesn't say god is love uh, god god has love the bible says god is love so god is yep. good and god is love and i started to train my mind i did not understand it but god is good yeah and that's when i would take the scriptures now one of the one of the homework i did is I take the scripture and I speak it out loud. Now, there are times that the devil would put uh, uh, thoughts in me like I'm not loved. I'm not accepted. Nobody understands mm. me. Mm. And I would feel so much pain. It, you know, it would be so much painful. I would say, I would say, Jesus, I don't want this, but I'm going through. I, I couldn't help mm. myself. But for my surprise, when I open my mouth and say, Abba, Father, I thank you for filling me with the love of Jesus. Abba Father, I thank you for filling me with the love of Jesus. Abba Father, I thank you for... And within a few minutes, I would see that that pain, that pressure is gone. Because that pain mm -hmm. came from the enemy. The spirit of rejection. Yeah. So when the devil comes and puts pressure, I would open my mouth and say, I am the body of Christ. And Satan, you have no power. And I keep saying, and I wonder, all of a sudden, my mind is free. I'm full of peace. Thank you. That's Jesus. why Praise I you. have to open my mouth and speak the word of God. I have to fight thoughts, not with thoughts, but I have to fight those thoughts with the written word of God. Now, it is not just you and I who got this pressure. If I read the Bible, Jesus had the pressure. In fact, the pressure of Jesus was whether he is the son of God. Do you hmm. know Jesus got the pressure that whether he is a son of God, the devil came and put pressure in him. If you are son of God, if you are son of God, if you are mm. son of God, and he was going through pressure. Now for Jesus to believe that he is the son of God, only through faith, he can believe. And he overcame that pressure by speaking 
the written word he opened his mouth every time and he spoke it is written now in mm. the beginning when i got the pressure i thought it is my own thinking but when i started to get into the word of god i realized it's not my thinking it's the devil who's coming and putting the pressure in my mind and when i constantly speak he has to flee the moment he flees that's the time i feel such calm now remember what is of the spirit is spirit and what is of the flesh is flesh my flesh will never understand spiritual things now when i was trying to understand things with my flesh i was tormented but then i started mm. to speak the word of god now when i got into the spirit now through the help of the holy spirit what my brain was not able to understand i was able to understand spiritual things through the holy spirit amen so you can go to a place where you can bypass your human brain your human understanding you can go in a mm. higher level our human brain our human yeah. senses our physical senses is very limited they can only mm. see hear and understand physical things but once we tap into faith once we uh, tap into the spiritual sense the faith sense now that's why a person who's walking in faith is not walking you know for example when abraham believed that he is the father of many nation he did not have worry fear anxiety why because he superseded his natural senses and he went into the superior sense called the faith sense yeah when once we are in that superior sense now we 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 are bypassing we are actually uh, we can understand things earlier which my brain that, that's why the devil is attacking in my mind but once i activate in the spiritual sense in the faith sense now i can understand something even the devil can't understand yeah now the devil can't understand now the devil cannot understand everything the devil is not the devil is very smart when in the flesh in the human ability he is very smart okay yeah. if i come back to my brain the devil is extremely smart but the the devil doesn't have the holy spirit the moment i allow the spirit of god to take control I, when i am spiritual the devil cannot understand a spiritual man when i pray in tongues he gets confused when i speak the word of god he gets tormented because the devil doesn't understand the plan of god even the devil did not understand about the about jesus dying on the cross was yeah. victory if he would have understood he would have not killed jesus on the cross he would have not attacked yeah. jesus on the cross hmm so the devil can beat us as long as we are in our senses but once we get into the word of god and open our mouth and start speaking the word of god now we that's how we overcome the torment amen thank you jesus thank you jesus there is there is much more i am i am giving you only the hint and going only giving yes, you the outline answered me yeah yeah it's very good i just needed a little bit of understanding these little things yes and that little things will come only when you spend you know to uh, you spend hours and hours studying the scripture don't take, go and go into reading the whole it's not about how much information i have it's not about information it's about mm. taking one topic taking one teaching and taking few scriptures and meditating pondering imagining thinking studying researching and go deep into that and from okay. there the holy spirit will lead you okay Thank you sister. Praise God. Yeah, thank Praise you sister. God. God bless you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. So my dear brothers and sisters, um if anyone needed any prayers and uh if you need healings, you can raise your hands now. We'll be there another 86 now. We'll be finishing 815. so anyone need it you can come and ask sister joslin she will teach you by that same time if no one is there uh, sister may will continue with the scripture sister can you please go with the scripture if no one is there then only okay okay yeah but if anyone is there please raise your hands and then sister will stop and she will come to you praise the lord Praise God. Praise God. Okay. So, so you're just talking about the power, no? That just yeah. now. So I place this yeah. picture. Yes, yes. 
this is to Janet who has raised hand. Yeah. Yeah, sister. Hello, can you hear me, sister? Yes, sister. Hello, yeah, I'm Janet here. Uh, yeah. I'm talking on behalf of Reshma. Reshma is with me. Okay. Uh, Reshma, last last week you she healed. She got a healing for a back pain and migraine. Ah, uh, okay. She was healed of back pain and migraine. Okay. So I want to say thank you for that. And then she's here with me. She said, "You speak to her." I said, "Who try to say thank you? You say thank you for that." But back pain is little. Whenever she goes for walk for long, it will come back again. Okay, but the migraine is gone. She is gone. She is reading the scriptures. Continue to be repeating the scriptures. Okay, now, uh, give her um, three scriptures and tell her to okay. speak it every day. Okay? okay. One is Galatians three thirteen. Christ yes. has redeemed me from the curse of the law by becoming a curse in my place. Okay, and the second one is uh, Psalms uh, 22, verse 14. Jesus, every bone of yours was out of joint. By that pain, I am healed completely. Okay. Third one, I am the body of Christ. Satan, sickness, fear, curse has no power. Uh, fear, curse, sin has no power place over me. Okay. okay. Give her these three scriptures. The Bible says, God sent his word and healed. And the word of God is the medicine to all our flesh. Yeah. Proverbs 4, 20, 20 says that, the word, that, that his word is healing to all our flesh. Means it is the medicine to the whole body. So, Tell her to speak, continuously speak these three scriptures. Not, not only these three in the beginning, let us start with these three and ask her to not only read the Bible, but tell her to get into the teachings. You can get it from Brother Lawrence. Ask her to go into the teachings so that she will understand. Once a person understands, you don't need to come to anybody to tell, pray for me. Once the person understands, the person will know how to deal with the sickness. The person will know how to fight the sickness. The person knows how to speak life over the the person's body yes. okay is she there sister yeah she's here now is she having pain she feels tired when she walk and all without bed she, she walk she feels tired now yeah, at present yeah. now also yeah she's having pain, yes. okay ask her to close her eyes and say this, I am the body of Christ. I am the body of the Christ. Satan. Satan. Sickness. Sickness. You want in Konkani? I am. Okay. I can't hear you properly. Okay. I am the body of Christ. I am the body of the Christ. Satan, sickness, is she saying? Okay, Satan, sickness, fear, Satan, sickness, fear, sin, sin, curse, curse, has no power, no place in me. At no power, no place. Okay. Now, you say this every day, but now only say, I'm the body of Christ. Satan has no power, no place in me. Okay. I'm the body of Christ. The body of the Christ. Satan has no power, no place in me. Satan, no power, no place. I am the body of Christ. The body of the Christ. Satan has no power, no place in me. I am the body of Christ. The body of the Christ. Satan has no power, no place in me. 
I can have no power, no place with me. I am the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Satan has no power, no place in me. Satan have no power, no place in me. Keep saying that. I'm the body of Christ. Satan. Satan sickness has no power, no place in me. Keep saying that. Satan sickness has no power, no place in me. Satan sickness no power, no place in me. I'm the body of Christ. Satan has no power. No power, no place. Yes, keep saying that. I am the body of Christ. Satan, sickness. We have no power, no place in me. I am the body. Very good. Satan, we have no power, no place in me. I am the body of Christ. Satan, we have no power, no place in me. I am the body of Christ. Satan, we have no power, no place in me. I am the body of Christ. Satan, we have no power, no place in me. I am the body of Christ. You can you can feel you're completely fresh, strong. Thank you so much. Amen, amen. Now now what did you do? You only we only spoke the word. So every day, if you spoke the word for at least maybe one minute, if you can see so much power in that one minute, that's what we are learning. That the word is full of power. Correct. Yeah, the yes. word doesn't have power. The word itself is power. It's not having a part of power, but it is full of power. And when you speak the word, that word has the power to heal. The, in that word is the power to heal the sick. So when you open your mouth and speak the word, the word does the job. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Praise. Jesus. So that's why every day, take that three scripture not only the three, you can take more scriptures, but you take only one and keep saying it again and again, imagining it, then you're releasing that power. Praise God. And, and let me tell, tell you the meaning of the word power. The word power means, uh, the power is a force that brings result. Power is a force that brings result. Now, for example, when I say electricity power, and I put the light, what happens? The darkness goes and the light comes in. So power is a force that brings result that replaces something old with new. That replaces something old with new. So in Acts 1.8, we see that when I receive the Holy Spirit, I have received the power. Praise God. The power what? The power to bring result. And how do we bring result? By speaking the word, by meditating the word, by, you, by, by, by speaking the word with authority. Now, this word is power that brings result. That's why it says, but you shall receive power. Remember, God is the word and the word is the power. And the God is love. When I say God is love, that means love is that power. So when I receive love, when I receive God, when I receive the Holy Spirit, I have received power. Now what does power do? Power is a force that brings result. And it will always replace something old with new. 
So when I go and preach the gospel, I'm not just preaching some words. No, I'm preaching gospel. That is the power that brings result. And that's how we are witnesses unto and to uh, witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of this earth. Praise God. Just like how when the electricity uh, power, the yeah. light is put on, the darkness goes out in the same way, the word of God that is full of power and I open my mouth and when I speak that word, that word is alive, that word is active, the word is full of power, the word is energizing, the word is effective. And the word brings result that replaces the sickness with health, that replaces poverty with prosperity, that replaces curse with blessing. It always brings result and replaces that is old with new. It replaces hatred with love. Anger with mercy. It always replaces something old with new. Praise Thank God. You. And when we receive Jesus, we have received this power. And how did we receive Jesus? How we are born again? How a person is born again? By the word of God. How did Mother Mary became pregnant, she received the word and the word became flesh. How do we receive the word? Just like how Mother Mary became pregnant, we also receive the word and we become pregnant in our spiritual womb. And that word is the power. And how do we release this power? By opening up. How did God create the world? How did he release the power? By speaking. How do we release this power? by speaking it. Now what happened to that sister? All that I did is I gave her the word. In that word is the power for healing. I don't have the power. The word has. The word is in me. Because the word is in me, the power is in me because of the word in me. Now when she spoke the word, what did the word do? The word has the power, the force that replaced that sickness with health. But what will the enemy do? The enemy will come and put temptation in our mind so that we open our mouth and speak what? Death. Even though the power is there, even though we have the scripture, even though I know the word of God, what am I doing? I'm speaking, I'm weak. I have this problem. We are living sick because of our own ignorance, because of our own wrong understanding, because of our own wrong knowledge. There is nothing that God has to do. God has done everything. He's finished. In the cross, when he said it is finished, it's complete. Now it is you and I who have to take the word because the power is in the word. The word is the power. All I have to do is to take the word and plant it in my heart and I have to speak it out and release that power. And that is the witness in this world. Praise God. You want to add something else more, brother? No, no, sister. Perfect, sister. No, no. Uh, I want to say that just uh, Sister Cheryl Fernandez is there. She's raised her hand. Up. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yes, Sister Cheryl. Uh, good afternoon, um, Sister. Good afternoon, Sister. Praise yeah. Jesus. First of all, I, I want to thank God. For last week, I spoke to Brother Lawrence about okay. my son's sickness. Like he was having a allergy. Okay. Uh, for food, dust, those things. And okay. me and Brother Lawrence uh, prayed together for him along with okay. my child. Child okay. is nine years old and he is totally healed. Praise and God, I thank just you, want Jesus. To praise him. And I'm concerned about my the same son is nine years old, he's not able mm. to concentrate in his studies. And like uh, he'll be, get distracted. So I have to sit next to him for his studies. And mm. when he speak, he's not able to speak. Like you no, know, he has the things in his mind, but is not able to put it out. So he'll be stuck in between. So I just want to pray for that. Okay, now we will pray, but it is very important for you to speak. Now, if you ask my own life, I was a failure all my life. I failed in all the classes. I was even sent out from the school. Now, because I was sent out of the school, I was not allowed to write my 10th exam. Doesn't mean that I, today I, 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 I'm not fulfilling or I, I'm not, God cannot use me. Or my life is destroyed. No. 
Praise God. Now, what you have to do is to speak every day life over your son and you have to tell him to speak. Now, what was the scripture I spoke every day is Isaiah 11 2. Especially when I was in the college, it was very, very challenging for me because I'm not like other, I was not like other students because I had to learn the basics. I had to learn the very basics. I was, because uh, I did not have the basics what they had. I was not able to, even I was, I was learning to read and write when I was in school. And I had to speak Isaiah 11 to every day. I added uh, some other scripture also with Isaiah 11 to, but Isaiah 11 to is the main. I started to say, the spirit of the Lord Jesus is upon me. The spirit of wisdom is upon me. The spirit of understanding is upon me. The spirit of counsel is upon me. The spirit of might is upon me. The spirit of knowledge is upon me. The spirit of fear of the Lord is upon me. And I also added Daniel um, chapter Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. The spirit of excellence is upon me. So when I started to speak it every day, I did not change in one day. But I saw that this spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, the spirit of excellence started to manifest in my life. Can you see that Daniel 6.3? Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents, prince, princes, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. You know, at that time, the kingdom Babylon was the uh, kingdom that was controlling the whole world. That means Daniel was put in authority, in the topmost position in the world next to the king. You know why? Because of the spirit of excellence. And when, when you start speaking every day, what you're releasing, you're releasing the power that manifests the excellency in him. Okay? So every day you speak this in his life. Don't speak what you see. Don't speak. What happened in my life is, when I started to speak it day and night, day and night, I saw the favor of God was uh, started to manifest in my life. I, I saw that uh, uh, wherever I went, I, I saw that God, even in the company where I was working, I was, uh, I was uh, junior, I was a fresher, but I saw that I was always having uh, favor, influence. I was always put in the, I did not go in search of favor. I did not go in search of, uh, I did not go and ask anything from anyone. Even now, even though I have resigned the job, I have come out of the company, I'm not, but yet, the company still calls me. The company still, uh, you know, it, it, the moment they come to know I'm leaving from my place, they, will, they won't even ask me. They will only ask me, okay, what time you have to leave? And they book my flight ticket. And I, I am not planning to go domestic flight. I want to take a bus and go, but they would force and book. My company would book. They would do everything. Now, why are they doing all these things? It's because of you. It, it, it was because when I started to speak it every day, I saw that, ma that word manifesting in my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. From today onwards, you don't say anything what you see. The okay. power to change your son is in God's word. God has created us in his likeness and image, and he has given us this power. And this creative power is in his word. And all that we have to do is to open our mouth and speak it every day. Imagine it and speak it. Okay. I, would, I gave it's you the scripture which I used in my life. Okay? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Lord, I thank you for this. There is, there is one more uh, uh, scripture. I don't know the verse. Uh, I have not used the scripture, but I have heard uh, Papa giving that scripture. Uh, it is it is in Isaiah. It talks about the teacher's tongue. Uh, do you know, brother, when it is teacher's no, tongue? No, uh, I, uh, it is somewhere, but I'll find it and put it on. Okay. 
so you, you can also put that scripture for his speak okay i got it i think it is isaiah um uh, was 50 4 was 50 was 4 chapter 50 okay. was 4 the lord has given me the tongue of the learned okay there is some transition which says the lord has given me the tongue of a teacher that i should know what to what uh, how to speak a word in season to him that is weary he wakeneth morning by morning he wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned praise god okay now uh, the lord has given me the tongue of the teacher so you start saying thank you jesus that you have given me my son the the tongue of the learned the tongue of the teacher okay okay and he should and he knows how to speak a word in season and you can you can you can modify and you can make your own prayer but tell every day thank you jesus that you have given my son the tongue of the teacher and and isaiah 112 and daniel uh, 63 and and keep speaking this every day and especially speak it when you are seeing something bad that's the time you have to speak okay. that's the key especially when you are seeing something that he weak some weakness in him something that is irritating you that's the time you have to bash the devil by speaking those words because that's a lie that the devil is telling you that this is how he is but god when he saw darkness he did not say there is darkness he said let there be light and we are not supposed to speak what we see we will continue this teaching next week okay we will continue and we learn how god speaks and how we are supposed to speak praise the lord okay sister praise the lord praise thank lord. you jesus okay thank you. thank you lord thank you father lord i thank you for uh, the son of the sister we thank you for him Lord you have not given him the spirit of fear but you have given him love power and sound mind I thank you Jesus that he has sound mind and you have given him teacher's tongue and thank you Jesus that your spirit is upon him the spirit of wisdom understanding counsel might knowledge fear of the lord holiness and the spirit of excellence is upon him and we come right now me and brother Lawrence we come in agreement lord that this son of yours is anointed and has the mind of Christ and he's completely set free from every fear in Jesus name amen 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 amen, amen. hallelujah praise god thank you jesus thank praise you jesus praise the lord thank you jesus praise wow, the lord it is wonderful thank you sister thank you so much praise god thank you jesus thank you is anyone is there anyone is anyone is anything another one minute then we'll uh, closing with the closing prayer what a wonderful truth sister today yes thank you holy so spirit yes genesis 126 and now last one is isaiah 54 50 verse 4 wow 50 verse 4 yes yes It is. It is not only for the children. It is for us as well. He has given me the teacher's tongue to speak a word in the season. You know that's very important to speak the right word at the right season to him yes. that is weary. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So, my dear brothers and sisters, I can't see any hands over there. so is only one request from my side that whatever sister is teaching today and fast few weeks please practice those truths in your life and today as she said that speak the promises don't speak any negative speak faith if no faith don't speak anything negative words so what we are doing is like today sister has given few promises that she already taught us how to speak so even if it's a finance then you can take philippines 419 and you can speak that promise on your on your life 
uh, if it is education, then sister is already given the promises, Isaiah 50, verse number 4, and uh, in Isaiah as well. Before that, uh, which one is sister there? First one, Isaiah? Uh, Isaiah 11, 2. Isaiah Daniel, 11, yes. Daniel 6, 3. Yes. So we speak these promises all this week, and then we will come next weekend, same Sunday, 6 o'clock Australian Melbourne time, and we will and share the testimonies. There are, we'll take another 15 minutes for the testimonies for, from next weekend. Uh, anyone can come and share your experience, how this word of God has changed your life. So we are really, I'm really waiting to listen the testimonies next weekend. So please active these promises in your life, put it in action. Because word of God says, faith without action, it is dead. The body is our without, uh, the body is dead without uh, uh, spirit, right? In the same yes. way, spirit also dead without action. faith. Yeah, without action. Yes, if you don't put your faith in action, your faith is dead. So everyone come together, we'll act on it, we'll work on it, we we'll speak the promises and we'll come with the harvest hundredfold. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So let's, Sister. we are closing now, or oh, sister, uh, with a closing prayer. Okay, yes, brother, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us the truth. Thank you for revealing us your true nature. Lord, today we realize that you are a good God and only good things have come from you. And you have come to give us life and life in abundance. And it is the enemy, the devil, who has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Thank you, Jesus that you have created us in your likeness, in your image, and you have given us the dominion over all the creation. And thank you, Lord, that today we realize and we understand that what Adam has lost through his disobedience through Jesus Christ, that we are born again and we are new creation and we are completely brand new creation. We are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And we thank you, Lord, that you have given us this power. And when we receive the Holy Spirit, we have received power to be a witness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for teaching us this truth. That we are created in the likeness and image of God. And this power is in our mouth. In, in, in our, this power is in your word and when we put this word in our mouth and speak it by faith we release this creative power thank you Lord for revealing us these truths, thank you for making this teaching extremely simple and easy and I thank you Jesus for anointing each one of our hearts and I thank you Jesus the anointing to study the word to un the anointing as we pray in tongues, the anointing that reveals the secrets and mysteries that is in the word. I thank you, Lord, for putting that supernatural thirst and hunger to study your word. I thank you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. I release this anointing to understand the scriptures, to understand the mysteries. Thank you, Jesus, that right now, Jesus, I thank you that you are anointing our hearts and our ears, that from today onwards, when we pray in tongues and when we study the scripture, it is you, Holy Spirit, revealing us as the truth that we know and we understand your heart. And now we understand the authority you have given us, the authority over sickness, the authority to speak your word. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that your kingdom is established upon this world. And the kingdom is established only when we go and we preach. And now we make this decision, Lord, in your name, no matter who that person is, whoever you are leading us, I make this decision. I will go and speak about you with love. And thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you for sending us angels who are sent to minister to us. And right now, thank you, Jesus that you have put this angel's charge over each one of us for our protection. And I thank you for you have released the angels. I speak now, angels, go and bring the promotion, bring the increase, bring the right souls. <clears throat> 
bring those people who are in depression bring those people who are who are in poverty bring those people who need salvation bring them in the name of jesus so that the gospel is preached to them and i thank you lord as your word says to pray for laborers right now we speak laborers that you are raising up laborers to preach the gospel so that these people who are who are who are in fear who are in depression who are poor they are set free in the name of jesus thank you holy spirit thank you lord we pray for the leaders in the church we pray for the leaders in the country we pray thank you holy spirit that you are raising leaders and and the gospel is being preached among the leaders as you as your word says the the spirit of this world has blinded them right now in the name of jesus i we take authority over those spirits that is blinding these people from receiving the truth i bind those spirits in jesus name i thank you lord i thank you father i thank you jesus we thank you jesus we praise you shishile khara baba rashi khara baba na kere bebe ne shikara baba na khura baba la hala baba na khara baba na khura mu mana hara baba na shikere bebe ne khara baba la hala papa na hala baba na khura mu mana hara mu mana khara baba na hara baba la hara baba na khura baba na hara baba na khara shikere kere hara baba la khara baba ra thank you father thank you lord thank you jesus for confirming your word and thank you father for complete healing and complete deliverance and this healing and this deliverance is only by understanding your truth and only by your spirit and where there is your spirit there is freedom there is liberty in the name of jesus i release this freedom you are completely set free my dear brother my dear sister you are free you are set free you are completely liberated you are healed just believe and receive it in the name of jesus amen amen Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Thank God. you, Jesus. Yes, brother, you wanted to say okay. something or pray? No, sister. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Okay. Praise God. Praise Thank, Thank you, you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, sister.